Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Madam Secretary, for, for coming over. Uh, very quickly about the waivers. As I understand it, there have been, oh, several million uh, people covered by a waiver from your department basically saying to the health care entity, uh, we're going to waive uh, the requirements in, in uh, Obamacare for your organization. Do you know how many people have received that waiver? How many? Senator, I mean, again, there are there are a variety of different provisions of the law where we were given some administrative authority. So people in the so-called mini-med plans who had uh, some kind of health coverage but not a robust plan, a number of those employers were given waivers knowing that the mini-med ceased to exist. And I, I can e get you in writing the numbers and the different categories, but I don't okay. know off the top of my head. I, I would appreciate that. Uh, what percentage of those plans are union plans? Um, I can tell you in the in the waivers that we've given, the union um, waivers were, I think, the fourth lowest category. Private employers were number one. City and state governments were number two. I think the education system was number three. And then I think union plans were okay, in the fourth category. Okay, so city category. and state governments, union plans were four. What I'd like from you is a detailed analysis of the number of waivers given the number of plans affected, the number of people within those plans, and what percentage of those plans happen to be uh, union plans. So be glad could, to do that. I appreciate that. Now, uh, Medicaid, you know this program well. <laughs> in South Carolina, as I understand it, if the Medicaid eligibility is expanded and implemented in 2014 as envisioned by Obama Health Care, my state will be uh, required to come up with close to a billion dollars of new state funding over a six or seven year period. Um, that's pretty true throughout the country, isn't it? Um, no, Senator, it actually isn't. And I, um, I had um, some of this discussion with um, mm -hmm. Senator Alexander, and I continue to have it with governors. The way the law is constructed, actually, the first number of years of the plan um, is fully federally funded, 100 percent federal funding. Um, that How many years of federal funding? I, there are four years where it's 100 percent, and the federal funding then goes from 100 to the lowest in a decade uh, that the federal government contributes is 90 percent. What, what about the, the next decade? Uh, the next decade isn't uh, described in this bill, but what you're talking about is the budget window. What I keep hearing about is this concern that somehow in the next several years there'll be a billion dollars in I, I, South I Carolina taxpayer money. and that, that, that we're expanding government health care programs to me that need to be reformed, not expanded, and that you may not hear this when you talk to governors, but I sure hear it from Democrat and Republicans. They're worried to death about Medicaid expansion. So, uh, as proposed on Obamacare. So, I got a simple proposition. Would you allow a state to opt out of Medicaid expansion if they chose to under Obama Health Care? Senator, what we have uh, supported from the beginning and actually asked that it be accelerated is if a state um, has a proposal to cover the same number of people. Uh, to provide um, health coverage and has a different methodology for doing that, um, we would be eager to take a look at that and work with them well, around that. But my that. question is, would you allow a state to just simply opt out because they have to, you know, they have responsibility for their citizens. The only way they can opt out is to do it the way you approve of, is that right? Well. Senator, as you know, I, I don't even have the authority. Right now, the law what provides Congress, for us to give said, an accelerated option what, to a state plan. What if the Congress said to all the states, uh, if you want to stay in Obama health care Medicaid expansion, you can, but if you want out because you think it's going to bankrupt your state, you, you have that option. Would you oppose that? Uh, I would, Senator, without an alternative for what happens okay. to those folks. Are, okay. Would they be ex eligible for the exchange, which would be a more expensive strategy? Right. Well, I guess what I'm saying is that Medicare and Medicaid are really federal government programs in a world. Do you think Medicare is in a world of hurt financially? I think that the long-term solvency of Medicare is a topic that uh, needs to absolutely be discussed. Would you agree with that Medicare and Medicaid have grown in unsustainable ways and without serious reform 
those two programs alone are going to bankrupt the country. And I guess my concern is before you add another, another government program where you subsidize the private sector with a government plan, I'd like to fix the two that are going to bankrupt the country. And uh, do you have a plan to save Medicare from insolvency? Well, as you know, Senator, in the Affordable Care Act, um, we began the... Um, Does President Obama, and I'll end this, my time's up. Does President Obama in his budget or anywhere else have a plan that would adjust the age for eligibility, means test for higher incomes in terms of premium subsidies? Is there a plan the President's come up with in the last three years to save Medicare from bankruptcy? Has he proposed a means test or raising the no, age? Has no, he sir. proposed a plan to save Medicare from bankruptcy? He has proposed certainly a plan that adds seriously to the life of Medicare. This budget continues that effort, and we are eager to work on an even longer-term strategy. So, uh, finally, if, if Paul Ryan comes up with a plan to make Medicare more sustainable and and physically sound over the next 75 years, would you at least applaud him for trying? Well, I think that what I've seen so far, um, Senator, from uh, Congressman Ryan is uh, really blowing up the program as we know it, not sustaining it. But I would be eager to engage in any conversations about protecting beneficiaries, fulfilling our commitment to long-term health benefits, and finding a sustainable way moving forward. Thank you.